Hi everyone, welcome to week five of Humanities 151. We are past the halfway point, so congratulations. Um, I wanted to give you a brief rundown of what this week pertains and the course project. So week five, what you're doing this week is we get to now, this is the fun part of humanities. So it's interesting to learn about the different types of art, but when we actually get to see the art in the different styles, that's what's really important. And that's where each culture is defined by how they use their art. So we're going to start looking at that. So the next chapters throughout the rest of the term deal with the actual application of those art, of those styles of art. So this week you're going to read chapter 9. You're also going to read chapter 10. Uh, we're going to review the course project assignment, which isn't due until the end of week 7. So you technically have two weeks to write this, which I think will be plenty of time. But as always, reach out with any questions. There is a discussion board and a quiz. Um, just to give you an idea, we're talking about uh, prehistoric times, Egyptian times, medieval times, the Romanesque period, the Gothic period. This week is really, really interesting. So the course project is the main focus uh, of information I wanted to give you this week. Um, you can read this document. It is in the week five section. But for the course project, essentially what you're doing is you're choosing two pieces of art. It can be any two that you want. It can be two sculptures. It can be a painting and a sculpture. It could be a piece of opera and a painting. It's up to you how you choose, but it has to be two pieces of art. At least one of those pieces has to be from your textbook. Uh, it's likely easier if you choose both of them from your text. This text has a ton of art pieces, but if you've found something in your own research while we go through each section and you find something that you truly, truly love, feel free to use that so long as one of your pieces is chosen from the text. Um, this isn't a traditional outline, or I'm sorry, not a traditional essay. So don't think that you have to go in there and write me a full essay. That's not it. I'm actually asking you to just sort of fill out an outline, so to speak, um, and kind of work from there. My goal here is that you are looking at different art pieces and how they apply in different periods. Um, so it's the, the application of art. Uh, ultimately, at the end of this, it'll be about three to five pages, double-spaced MLA citations. Um, you're analyzing two chosen artifacts, which are simply just pieces of art. Uh, you're identifying a common theme. A common theme is something that both of the works share and the message that those two works together are relaying to the viewer. And then you're going to compare the examples to one another. You're going to look at historical context. You're going to look at the medium that's used. You're also going to look at um, similarities and differences between the two pieces of art. Uh, this is very similar to what you're doing in this week's discussion board as well. So first thing you would start is obviously you're going to choose your pieces. Um, then you would describe your cultural artifacts. Now this is this section that you're seeing there. That's what I would use as your template. You know, you would just kind of go through and say, describe your cultural artifacts. Go forward here. Um, you don't have to include the questions within your template, but just here's your guide of, of filling in this information. So in this first section, you're choosing your artifacts and you're providing that information. So the name of the artifact, the author or the artist, uh, the period from which it is, where it was at the time, possibly where it is now, um, and include, an, include a, an image of it as well. If it's a piece of visual art, if it's a, if it's a musical piece, feel free to include a YouTube link. Um, whatever you can find, you get to be creative here. You're going to identify one common theme that sort of pulls your two pieces together. Um, you're explaining how your theme is personal. So why should a reader or a viewer be impressed by this theme and these two works looking at them together? For example, if I were looking at um, Emily Dickinson's Because I Could Not Stop for Death and Albrecht Dürer's uh, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, the theme could easily be death. Um, and it's important because we all, it is something we all face. It is something we all deal with um, on personal levels, but also the, the idea of knowing that, that death is, is an eventuality for everyone. Um, 
you can kind of explain that and go more in detail when you look at it from your personal experience. The next part is profession. So if I were sticking with the death theme, what profession is specifically affected by that theme? Uh, so maybe I'm, I'm considering essential workers like doctors and nurses right now um, are highly affected by death. Uh, no matter what, sometimes there's nothing they can do to prevent it. They see it coming, um, but again, they can't stop it. So that idea of, of death being an inevitability. Next part, you're going to research at least three resources. And when I say three resources, I do not mean Wikipedia. Wikipedia should not be used. Every week on the lecture notes, I try to give you a multitude of sources. Please feel free to use those sources. There are other sources out there. Do not use Wikipedia. I will not accept it. A lot of the work that you find or the artifacts that you may be choosing the textbook could be a source. I would like to see more. I would like to see you actually go out and research more than just the textbook. Um, but there's also sources out there. Um, many of the art museums across the world have websites that have detailed information about these pieces. Use the Bass Library. Uh, use the Public Library. There are so many sources out there that you can find that explain different periods, different pieces, different artists. You just have to look for them. Don't just stick to the, the basic Google search. Try to challenge yourself into finding sources. But you want to look into these questions here. Uh, the next section, again, here's more questions that go into it. The next section, you're going to look at... Um, you're going to look at historical context. So why was the piece created? A lot of the time, pieces are created based on current events. For example, Picasso's Guernica was created as a response to the Spanish Civil War. Uh, you just have to research some pieces to find out why an artist might have created them. Uh, that can give you a lot of information. Uh, Frida Kahlo's uh, two, uh, Thorn Necklace with Hummingbirds uh, was created as a response to her husband cheating on her. Uh, so it was a reflection of herself and how she was dealing with, uh, with that shock in her life. But again, it's that research that you have to look into and say, well, I wonder what I could find, or I wonder what drove the artist to create this. Uh, the next piece is you're going to compare and contrast your two choices. And then the next one, you're going to talk about the medium. So remember, the medium is very important for how something is created. So, for example, if I'm doing a sculpture, there's a reason that they're choosing the material that they've chosen. You know, marble is very easy to carve, um, but it also, as we've seen with Michelangelo's David, it is struggling. They, you know, they've since moved it indoors uh, because it wasn't with standing the elements. You know, Picasso never created it to make it last hundreds of hundreds of years, so he wasn't expecting it to be exposed to such elements. That's why it's no longer kept outdoors. And even then, most art museums think about pieces that are temperature controlled. Uh, there's no lights on the actual pieces, all because, it, uh, all because of the name of preservation. They're trying to keep these pieces uh, as a testament to time. Uh, as you move forward, you're going to create a thesis statement. Obviously, any working piece of art or any working written work needs a thesis statement. Um, I'd also like you to identify an audience. So if you were to present this information more so than just to the class, who would you present this to? Who could you present it to? Who could benefit from hearing this message? Um, how would you tailor that message to them? And then, of course, you want to cite your sources. So within, specifically within these sections here about the historical context, similarities and differences, and the medium, this is where you want to cite your sources. This is where you want to include, whoops, where you want to include in-text citations and pull from that material to give you additional information. Uh, if you're struggling finding sources, please let me know. I will help you out. Um, if you're struggling with what sources, or I'm sorry, what artifacts to choose, again, please let me know and I will help you out. Um, but this is meant to be fun and a different way to look at the art that you've been studying for the past several weeks. Uh, again, if you have any questions, send me a Canvas inbox message and I will get back to you as soon as possible.